Hey everybody, so this is going to be a video about the copper backsplash that I've made for my van coming up. Um, I've been fighting this for almost two weeks now and it was quite a cluster to get it to this point. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. It's got this kind of glassy kind of three-dimensional look but it looks a lot warmer than I think what you usually get if you do like a clear epoxy finish. It doesn't look so plasticky and kind of cold. It has a really nice warm feel to it. I've got three pieces that will make this backsplash in my van. Um, this main backsplash that you see me working on right now but then it also wraps around to the back door so i've got another back door panel it's got some copper on it and then i've got one more little trim piece i haven't made but you'll be seeing the back door panel here shortly this was a far more frustrating project than i expected i had actually chosen to do copper over something like adhesive tile or other things because i thought this would just be really quick and easy but let me take you on a little journey back in time here and show you where things went awry and what I would do next time in case this is something you want to do in your van. For the record, today is February 2nd and I actually started working on this. I unboxed the copper on January 20th and I thought this would be a quick one day project, maybe leaving it overnight to dry and then being done with it. First, I chose this copper color because my girlfriend and I decided that it kind of did a good job bridging the browns of maple wood in our van as well as kind of like the blue-green hues of the fabric we had chosen. So I thought this would just kind of tie the whole thing together and look quite nice. Things started out really smoothly. The copper, you know, came in a roll. When I unrolled it, it was one eight foot by 18 inch tall piece. I went ahead and cut it into the pieces I needed. The backsplash was just one long piece. And then the back door panel is actually made out of two pieces, but the seam is below the countertop. I did notice that one of the factory edges wasn't cut very well. It had a, just a little bit of fraying on it that was kind of making it difficult for me to line up. But it turns out I could just run my router with the straight edge on this because copper is a very soft metal. So it actually trimmed up very nicely. And then what's usually the most stressful part is, you know, applying the glue and then setting it into place, you know, aligned just perfectly. That actually went really well too. And at this point, I thought I was almost home. All I thought I had to do was paint this thing and be done. So when I was finishing up, the back door panel, where I had mentioned it was made out of two different pieces, I had used some painter's tape across the seam to hold it together as I was aligning it. And when I pulled the tape off, it actually pulled up some of the patina. All right, don't tape your patina because it's a piece of shit. Um, and that I didn't expect. That was uh, pretty frustrating. And then when I was kind of trimming the edges, I also noticed that some of the patina was flaking up a bit. And this kind of surprised me partially based on the sample I had gotten and partially because I had paid to have what's called a lacquer finish on it. But when I went back to the website, it told me that it was only one coat of lacquer that you were getting and that more was recommended for most projects. And then on top of that, they also told me that I have to use their special lacquer, which was like at least four times more expensive than the stuff I can get locally. And I just wanted this to be over with. So I went to the local store and I bought a can of Watco Satin. All right, so a little interruption here. I'm not trying to blame the company because I clearly didn't follow their finishing guidelines, but I did order a sample through them ahead of time. And this product, you know, I have to, I've gone ahead and creased it. You can see the creases on it. And I've tried to scratch it with different abrasives. And it, you know, I have to be trying to damage this stuff to actually have any impact on it. While like little remnants of the stuff I ended up working with, you know, I feel like I look at this wrong and it starts to flake. So I think what's kind of happened here is like, you know, when you get a flooring sample and it's just this perfect little piece of floor and, uh, but once you actually buy a big batch of it, there's, you know, quite a bit of imperfections and such. I think that's kind of what's happened is that the samples they're sending out are just not totally representative of what you're getting. So as a result, you know, when I went ahead into that next lacquer step, I think just in the back of my head, I thought that I was working with the product that I had gotten a sample of and not what I ended up working with. So I was a little disappointed in that, but things will go downhill pretty quickly here. And this turns into a huge headache. Anyways, I went ahead and brashed on a couple coats of lacquer and it just looked horrible. I tried doing, you know, what I thought was kind of a normal thickness coat. And then I tried doing a very light coat and then a very heavy coat. And it all was just showing a lot of brush marks, a lot of texture through the lacquer of like what the copper was doing underneath. Um, and it was just kind of turning into a total art project. I mean, this was just really looking bad. And, and that was pretty disappointing. I think the big takeaway I have here is if I was to do this again, I would 100% recommend you just get a spray lacquer. I had tried not to use it because I didn't want to mask off the entire rest of this 
piece that it was going on. Um, but in the end, I'll actually end up having to mask it off anyways to spray lacquer later. So I tried to go around just like really lightly sanding it to try to get the brush marks leveled with the thinking that if I just got it fairly level, I could go ahead and just hit it with a coat of spray lacquer and then be done. I did get it flatter, but I actually ended up blowing through the lacquer in a few just slight high spots. And those turned out to be these just like nice little, really shiny, fresh looking copper patches that obviously look like an eyesore. Other things that had occurred is on that first coat when I was applying this, it actually, when I applied the lacquer, it actually made the color and the patina start to flow. So I've kind of got these areas that are a little darker and a little brighter, and you can just see how that lacquer bubble kind of just flowed the color over. So at this point, I think this was like five days into the whole thing, and it, it, it wasn't a whole lot of fun. So now I was going down the avenue of trying to figure out if I could somehow re-patina the copper in these few spots. So I basically tried to get my hands on everything that I read on the internet might work, which was like salt, hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, some miracle Grow, um, basically anything I could legally buy. I bought some ammonia, but I just couldn't really set up any way to fume it because I think you're supposed to use ammonia fumes, but I couldn't really seal this off well enough. Um, so I just spent a couple days really trying to get something that would tarnish it and maybe return some of that color to these areas but it just wasn't working. Um, the best kind of tarnish effect I got was actually with salt and hydrogen peroxide, but you know, it just, it still didn't look uniform at all. All right, so now we got a little bit of uh, vinegar and salt. All right, so after a night of uh, trying out some ammonia as well, um, you know, this uh, it's kind of the ammonia puddle, didn't do as well as I had hoped, then we had just plain an update that did jack shit i was pretty frustrated i think this was about day seven at this point so i actually at this point remembered that when i was pulling up that painter's tape and i had actually peeled off some of the color i had ended up actually using some sharpie to kind of try to re-blend it so now my new game plan was that i tarnished the copper in those areas as much as i could and then i actually went around and kind of blotted some sharpie ink over those areas to try to kind of blend them um and it didn't look great, but I, at this point, you know, I was really fed up with this. I had, you know, spent an entire day kind of trying to learn how to tarnish copper or, you know, make it have patina and it just wasn't working out. So after the Sharpie was dry, I did end up, you know, masking off the entire rest of this rear door panel and I went ahead and sprayed some lacquer on it. Two days later when it was dry, I went ahead and essentially sanded it with a 2000 grit, just like really high end kind of sanding disc to get it flat. And then I ended up using this cutting compound on a wool pad and it just kind of finally got the look I wanted. All right, so I think we're gonna call it good enough. Um, it's clearly not perfect, but it's got a lot more of kind of a nice glass look now. Um, I'm pretty, I'm a lot happier with it. We still got some imperfections like you can see the light passing there. After having learned that, I basically repeated the process on the backsplash where I, sanded it down very lightly. Whatever kind of bad spots I had, I went ahead and tarnished it with some hydrogen uh, peroxide and salt, then used a little bit of Sharpie ink, then spray lacquered it, and then went ahead and with that 2000 grit and then that buffing wool pad, which is what you saw at the start of this video. So I guess at this point, if you're still following along, would I do this again? Um, I think I would. The, the two things that I really, needed to know before I started this is that the patina is just a lot more fragile. When someone tells me I have a lacquer finish on something, I expect some amount of protection for it. And it was way more fragile in its you know, original state than I expected. And then I think the next best thing to do that like needed to be done is to just use some kind of spray lacquer right off the bat, you know, maybe apply three, five coats and call it good. So pretty frustrating, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with this end product. Thanks for watching, guys.